Well, <clears throat> shalom and good evening, everyone. All right. Uh, we are going to be starting another teaching tonight. And um, we're going to open up in prayer. And then I do light adjustments. And after that, then we'll get started, as they say down in Australia, straight away. Amen. Okay. So, join me now, if you will, in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you, surrendering myself unto you as your vessel to put out what Holy Spirit has led me to put together for teaching uh, and increasing our knowledge and understanding of you. So, Lord, I ask that everything that comes forth tonight is all about you and nothing about me. I am just like a, a, a speaker on a radio. You are the radio. I'm just a speaker to orate what you are saying. And that's all I ask, Lord. I ask nothing of me, and that is all about you. And I humbly give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Okay, so now I'm going to go up front and do a little bit of light adjustment, and then we'll get started straight away. Amen. Light adjustment takes a little, a few minutes <clears throat> because, of, because of the circumstances. There's a bunch of switches involved. <laughs> This is where it would really be nice to have an assistant. I could have someone do the light adjustments while I am working my way back. But I have not that, so we'll go ahead and get started. So as I finish the prayer, <coughs> I said amen. And that's how we start, amen and amen. So, so what is it that we will be discussing tonight. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> okay. We're going to be talking about Kislev 5784. The, the picture that you see right there, I kind of consider that somewhat generic per se, um, but it does contain a lot of good information uh, and, and actually it serves as a good lead-in to the information about this month. Now, we will discuss some of the in, uh, Im, images, I can speak English, some of the images that you see on it, as well as some others. So keep in mind some of the things that you see. Um, I'm back here behind the uh, tablet, trying to see how it looks through the, from the camera's view to see how it's going to look on YouTube, I mean on Facebook, and then later on if it, if it is uh, posted onto YouTube. Now, let's go ahead on and move on to the next image. And in this image here, this is the regular placard for the month of Kislev. But... I just want you to pay attention to some of the things that you see on here because I have another image that I want to use instead of this one. So this is what we have. Now, this is going to be interesting. Now, I do have a challenge with it, and that challenge is that when I took this off the Internet and put it on this PowerPoint, I had to uh, you know, spread it out to make it bigger and the, uh, the pixel, uh, let me see, I'm trying to think of these terms that you use. The, the image got grainy. That's the best way I can put it. So a lot of the stuff on here is a lot of information. If you look this up, just look up Kislev uh, 
uh, pictures for, of Kislev on, uh, on Google or whatever, and, uh, and you'll see this picture. It's a very, very beautiful picture, but like I say, having to expand it to fit it onto the, the screen so that it fit on this big screen that's uh, in front of the, the tablet, that's, that's what you end up having as a result. So what I'm going to do, because things are not very, very clear, what I did was I took the time to uh, make known what I'm talking about on this placard. So what happened is, as I'm speaking about a certain thing, a line will come up and it, and it, and it have a corresponding number to my notes. And that way you can pretty much figure out where I am too. And a matter of fact, in my notes, I am giving you the, the foundation for, for my note number three. And so the first thing that'll come up will be my note number four and all the rest of them will match accordingly. So <clears throat> when we look at the month of Kislev, we're gonna learn about it. And here's the first thing we're gonna talk about is the month of Kislev it connects the months of December and November and December. And that line is above it because if it was below it, it would cover the other grainy looking image below November and December. Okay. And that is according to our Gregorian calendar. Now Kislev is the ninth month on the ecclesiastical calendar and it is the third month on the combination Jewish, civil, or creation calendars. Kislev is the month to develop your war strategies. See my note number six over there? That's where we are. And now, what that means is that you, know, you and I, you know, or we, the children of God, need to understand the importance of being armed with our spiritual weapons and to be prepared to take our stand against the enemy. Note number seven, Kislev is the month to review your support system. In other words, it is to consider your friends and associates and ask God for guidance as to why you and they are connected. Now, I, that takes me back to my childhood. My mother used to say, you become like those you hang around with. So, uh, and I, I used to hear some of the, my other friends' mothers used to talk about some of the, the boys in our neighborhood that had a bad reputation. And uh, their mothers would say, uh, those boys are a bad influence on you. Well, you know, for adolescent boys, if you say they're a bad influence, now all you, all, and, and that comes from an authority, authority figure such as a parent, a mother, or a father, more so a mother than a father, and I can get into that, but I won't belabor you with that, but when, when, when mom says it, it kind of makes you want to hang around with them more. <laughs> so, now, if dad said, you know, the way I grew up, what, you know, dad, dad was like God. Dad was E.F. Hutton. When dad spoke, you listened. So I went on into that anyway, didn't I? Okay. But anyway, that's what we got to do. We got to evaluate who are we friends with and ask God, why are we connected with them? See, that's what's going to help us in our spiritual walk. Let's go to number eight. Now, Kislev is the month when God wants to give you a second chance. And what am I saying? That is, God wants you to have a second chance at renewed opportunities or to confront and deal with things that may have defeated you in the last season. So we can look back and you will use the past not as a swamp to wallow in, but we use it as a stepping stone to step up upon to go higher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kislev is a month of security and trust. 
kiss of the month to let your light shine in the darkness of this world. Now that going to put me on the rabbit trail because I got to talk to the saints that are watching this. This is the month to let your light shine. Okay? In other words, there are many people out there. I'm going to say, without this being a qualified statement, I estimate roughly about 40% of the population are in darkness. But if you are a child of the Most High God, you are light. And when you come into their midst, you got to come in there boldly and you got to come prepared to share the truth of the gospel with them for their benefit. So don't forget that. Amen. Okay, so let's go to note number 11. Here's another thing that's personal to you. Kids live is your month to let the river of God flow in a fresh way from your innermost being. That means that the month of Kislev is the month to enter into a new level of trust and rest. Now, that takes me back to number 10. Let your light shine. 11, let the river of God flow through you in a fresh way, affecting your innermost being. Listen, as you speak to someone who don't know Christ and you're sharing with them what you know, don't be shy about what, how much you know and how much you don't know. Share what you, what you do know, even if you don't understand it. You are light. So when you speak to them, you are speaking light to them. When you talk about Jesus, you're speaking light to them. They're in darkness. This is what I mean. Let the river of God flow through you in a fresh way. In other words, get out of your comfort zone and be willing to stand before someone who don't know Christ and share with them. Okay? All right, let's go to number 12. I didn't mean to preach tonight, but I guess I, I slip into that very easily. <laughs> Kids live is the month to stay focused on God's call for your life. In other words, God doesn't want you to miss the mark this month. Now, see, 10, 11, and 12 all are connected. Number 13, Kids live is the month you should beware of your dreams and visions. Ask God to bring new revelations for your future. You're going to have dreams. You're going to see visions. You might slip into a day, daydreaming trance, and you may see things because there's a lot going on in the cosmos. Okay? And this is the, the, what it's saying is beware of your dreams. Um, that takes me back to an, another rabbit trail. My kids, uh, and Robin and Brandy Cunningham, they're dream interpreters. So contact them. And I think when the, the next teaching, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put their their information up so that uh, those that need it, well, I have to get their permission. And see if they'll let me put their information up so that you can get in touch with them because, boy, it's needed. I should have, I wish I had thought about it earlier now because, uh, and gotten their permission because uh, this is important right here. This is time that the kids live is a month and we're in the first day, but you're going to be seeing things. But that's not just going to happen just for this month. This is going to be the beginning of the times when you're gonna be seeing things more vividly than you've seen in the past. And if you think about that and keep that in the forefront of your mind, you will see what I'm talking about as we continue on through this presentation. Let's go to number 14. Now, Kids Live is the month to ask God 
to bring to you your true identity. Not the phony identities that a lot of people that falls into that large uh, percentage of the population that just decides that they want to be something that they're not and call that them, them, uh, their identity. No, no. Your true identity is who you are in Christ. Those people out there that are lost, those guys are saying they're gals and those gals are saying they're guys and all of this other craziness. That's all from the pits of hell. Okay. That has nothing to do with one's true identity. Your true identity is what God made you to be and nothing else. Okay. But start this month, if you haven't done so already, start this month asking God to show you your true identity. Okay. The stone associated with the month of kids. You see number 15 pop up there? That is a stone. It is called the opal, but it also has another name called the rainbow jasper. Okay. <clears throat> Kislev is the month in which the celebration called the Festival of Lights. Now, you may not be able to see it very clearly. Yeah, you can. At least I can. From I'm looking through the camera now. It says Feast of Lights. Then that other word in white below that you can't read that, so that's why I put this image up there so you can see the word. That word below that is that top word, Hanukkah, okay, spelled with the H. But then there's another uh, way that it is spelled with a C, but the pronunciation is the same, okay? Hanukkah and Hanukkah are both the same. It's almost as, as if... The C is silent, but the C-H uh, is, it, well, not the C-H, but the C of the C-H-A-N-U-K-A-H. That C is silent, and so then you just have the rest of the word, but you notice that there's one K in the bottom word as opposed to the top word because of the addition of the letter C in front of the H. Oh, that was a lot of information. Now, each year... This festival, the Festival of Lights, it begins on the 25th day of Kislev. The next thing is the Mazal, or the constellation associated with the month of Kislev. And that is Sagittarius, the archer. Now, it's small, but you can, you can see it. At least I can see it through the, through the uh, tablet. We'll talk about that a little bit more. The letter associated with the month of Kislev is called the letter Semic. Okay? And that means that life, life is cyclic. You know? and, and that means that things come into full circle. And that is when, when things come back around to that start point, that is when you break out of old cycles. Now, I didn't like the way the image was looking for the, the letter, so I decided to add a better look. I think you can see it a little bit better there with the white background. The Hebrew tribe associated with the month of, of Kislev is the tribe of Benjamin. And you can barely read that on there, but that's the tribe of Benjamin. And there's a key word about the tribe of Benjamin, and that key word is peace. P-E-A-C-E. -E. Finally, the Bible scripture for the month of Kislev is Genesis chapter 9, Verses 13 through 17. Now, here's what I'm going to do. The last thing we just talked about. You notice that uh, before I said in the very, very beginning, way back up at number four, I said I put that line above November, December, because it would be across um, 
the uh, Genesis 9, 13 through 17. But then I decided, eh, it's too hard to see. So I decided to just go ahead on and make it easier to see. That's why I put that, that, uh, that box there with it written in there. So that's the last thing we talked about. So that's going to be the first thing we're going to talk about when we're going into more detail. Let's review that scripture. Now, Genesis 9, 13 through 17. This is God speaking. And God said, now, I'm going to stop every now and then because I'm going to I'm point out some key things. Verse 13. I said my. Let me start right there at my. God said that the, the, the fourth word, I said my rainbow. Okay, so God said that, that you notice my is capitalized. God says, I set my rainbow in the cloud. It is not those people who want to live an alternative lifestyle, which the Bible says is an abomination to God. It's not I'm saying it. The Bible says it. When men want to sleep with men and women want to sleep with women and animals or whatever, then that in the eyes of God, the creator of all of us, that is an abomination to him. So you can see now how this group are running around with flags draped around their bodies, flags draping from buildings and things like that, calling that their pride. No, the rainbow is God's instrument of covenant. It has absolutely nothing to do with being proud to be crazy, for lack of a better way of putting it. Okay, back to the scripture. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it, what it? My rainbow shall be for the sign, not any sign, the absolute only sign of the covenant between me, God, and the earth. Okay? 14, God said, it shall be when I, God, bring a cloud over the earth that the, and that the goes back to the capitalized my, rainbow shall be seen in the cloud, not on the building, not draped around the shoulders, not drawn on the street, not painted on the side of a building. No. This is the reason why the rainbow is in the heavenlies. The rainbow is a spiritual thing. It has nothing to do with the physical thing. It is a spiritual thing. You cannot touch a rainbow. Okay? A rainbow is a light prism. Oh, boy. This is, this is pushing me into preaching, so let me, let me continue on. <laughs> okay. All right. God said, and I will remember my covenant. Remember, it's God's covenant. It's not what I was talking about earlier. Say, so I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, talking to Noah, and every living creature of all flesh. So, what is that saying? God is saying, listen, those people that want to live that alternative lifestyle I still don't want them to go to hell. I still, it is my will that none should perish. So God is saying, that's my, that is my covenant between everything on earth that's living. All flesh. He adds to that. Said the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Now, why was that? Why did it happen in the beginning? Everybody that reads the Bible, no. It was because of sin. Look at the state of the, of the world now. I won't say any more about that. Going back to the scripture, verse 16. God said, the rainbow, his rainbow, shall be in the cloud. Not on the other things like I mentioned earlier. And I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant 
between God and every living creature that is on the earth. Now, I have to go back to the people that wanted to live an alternative lifestyle. If they end up in hell, God didn't send them there. Because here is the covenant in right up there in um, black and pink, since the background is pink. I was going to say black and white, but the background is kind of a pinkish looking color. But there it is right there. That is the covenant. God said every living creature that is on the earth is under this covenant should he or she receive it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, man. Ooh, I keep slipping into preaching. <laughs> okay, let's go to 17. And God said to Noah, that's the narrative, the commentation, then it goes back to God's words again. This is the sign of the covenant which I, God, have established to be between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Now, I hope that uh, anyone that's watching this and have friends that don't know the scripture and don't know Christ, maybe they've lived an alternative lifestyle, I hope that they can see this and hear my commentation on it because uh, that wasn't me speaking. That, that was Holy Spirit led. My goodness. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to slip that far into uh, preaching, but wow, I got goosebumps on my moose pimples. All right, let's take a look at the calendar. This is the calendar for the month of Kislev. All right, now I'm going to come up there with my pointer if I can find it. And I'm going to point out a few things to you. Okay, we're in the month of Kislev 5784. As I said earlier, Kislev connects the month of November and December. And this is the 2023 calendar year. So today is Monday, November 13th on our Gregorian calendar. When the sun set in Israel, which was quite a few hours ago, the, the 14th actually began. So we've been in Rosh Kadesh Kislev all day here in America. Okay. Once that, they start from sunset to sunset. Once the sunset on the 14th tomorrow, that will be the first full day. And therefore, Rosh Kadesh Kislev will have been fulfilled as the first day. This is the reason why it starts here, but the number starts here. Okay. Now, if you go over here to Friday, and go down two, uh, two bots to the third box. Now you see the word December highlighted. And December is in red. This is to let you know that when we say connects November, December, there it is right there. Now we're moving into December. This is the Gregorian calendar. Okay? Now, when we get down to here, the only thing that's highlighted, the last week of Kislev, the only thing that's highlighted is Hanukkah. And we're going to talk about that. It's the only holiday on the calendar for the month. Okay, I'm working my way back behind, hoping not to knock the, uh, the, uh, oh, forget it. I can't think of what I'm going to say. All right, let's look at the next thing. The next thing we're going to look at is the stone associated with the month of Kislev. But first of all, you need to know that each stone on the ephod, those of you that are familiar with the Bible, it talks about the ephod in, in, in the book of Leviticus. Okay, Each one of those stones, they represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Now we know that when we say Israel, most of us, hear the word Israel, we think about a country. Israel started out as a name. The name previously was Jacob, and then God changed the name to Israel. And that's where the word Israel comes from. And I'm still trying to grow through that myself. 
So he stone on the ephod. Now, according to Exodus chapter 28, <clears throat> verse 17, I said, I said Leviticus, it's Exodus. Okay, the ephod will have four rows of stones. Okay, one, two, three, four. And there'll be three stones in each row. Okay, but they, they come, they go this way. First stone, second, third. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and so forth and so on. So, obviously, that means this is the twelfth stone. Okay? That was another little free lesson. Now, here's so, and, and, um, in Exodus 28, 17, God said that Ephod would have four rows, three stones per row. Now, let's take a look at something. That bottom row, the stone will be a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. Okay? That kind of bright looking, greenish looking color. That'll be the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. I guess you could see my point. I couldn't see it. Okay. Of course, jasper is, as I said earlier, another name for the opal. Now, check this out. And I could be wrong in this, but I'm going to just share my opinion. Being that Kislev is associated with the month of Benjamin. Benjamin was the baby boy born to Jacob. There was no other sons born after Benjamin. Okay? Benjamin being the last one born, the last stone on the ephod to represent Benjamin is the jasper or the opal. That kind of says something to me. Also, when we think about Genesis chapter 9, verses 13 through 17, okay, the rainbow, the jasper is called the rainbow jasper. So all these things tie in as I was looking at that. Now, in spite of the fact that two of the 12 tribes of Israel are not born of Jacob. Okay? That, that is uh, Ephraim, associated with the month of Tishri, and Manasseh, associated with the month of Kesban, which we just left. Okay? Both of those, they're not born of Jacob. They are the sons of of Jacob's next to last born son, Joseph, who was thought to be dead. So when we look at the fact that, that, oh boy, this is really, really interesting here. Tishri, Ephraim, Kesvan, Manasseh, and then Benjamin. So, because Jacob was believed, uh, uh, Joseph was believed dead, his two sons were put in the place of number one, uh, Joseph, who was believed to be dead, to take up one of the spaces, and then Eli, who became the Levitical priest. So those two sons were needed. And I talked about that last month, too. So if any of you are keeping up with these teachings, you can see how one thing is tying into the next. Now, many of the biblical names of the stones, they may not be the same as the names that we call them by today, but the stones are still the same stones. But I kind of like the way God set this up when I look at it at the ephod, because it just shows God's infinite wisdom. Hallelujah. Let's talk a little bit. Let's learn a little bit more about the opal and or jasper. Amen. <laughs> okay. Now, this stone looks similar to 
the original stone that we saw on the placard way back on the third slide. That was the slide with the howling wolf, remember? Okay. See that, that slab there? Now let's look at let's look at this and that. See they, they look very much the same. There's the howling wolf. This is the regular placard for the month of Kislev. I use other pictures for a, a different reason, but uh, I like that. <clears throat> okay. Now there is a reason why in many, uh, in modern times, we differentiate between the opal and the jasper. Okay. The opal. It is a mineral consisting of quartz and silica, but the quartz in the opal is inferior in hardness and the specific scientific gravity, whatever that means, okay? While in the jasper, it is an opaque or impure variety of quartz, opaque and impure. And as a result, it ends up consisting of uh, a series of colors. Now, the colors are considered to be dull in appearance. And then they break their concordulity uh, when the surface is smoothed out. And that's what you see there. So it looks like all these colors are embedded into a clear field. The stone, this is one of the bullet points that we talked about earlier. The, the stone itself, the uh, opal, it is believed to inspire originality and it is also believed to boost creativity as well as to encourage the expression of one's true self. Wow. That goes right back to those notes from way back whenever it was. So, we don't saw a tie-in. We, we, we looked at a tie-in here. Let's now, since we talked about the opal being the last stone on the ephod, we talked about Kislev associated with the Hebrew tribe of Benjamin. Let's talk about Benjamin now, because we see a, there's a correlation here. All right? So, the first thing I want to do, though, in talking about Benjamin is we want to look at the name. Okay? On this picture here, at the very top, we see the name spelled in Hebrew letters. Okay? Down at the bottom, we see it spelled using English, uh, uh, English letters, but in the way that you and I would read. But what we got to remember is our Hebrew brethren, they read from right back to left. So, back to the pointer. This letter, this Hebrew letter here is called the bait. Okay? And if you listen to the sound, bait, B, bait, that is this letter here. Okay? So this, this word, that, that B is here, and then all the rest of that goes back this way. Okay? <clears throat> now at the bottom, we see how the name is pronounced. In the Hebrew tongue, it is pronounced as Ben Yah Men. But when we get to that last part, Men, it's pronounced as if there was an E added to the M I N and E. But the sound would not be the same. 
has a sound like the word mean. Benjamin. That's how it's pronounced. Benjamin. Okay. Let's go to another slide here and learn some more about Benjamin. First of all, we're going to look at is the banner. That is a beautiful banner. And we're going to talk about that picture on the banner momentarily. But who was Benjamin? Now, we already know that Benjamin was the youngest son born of Jacob with his most loved wife, Rachel. Unfortunately, Rachel died after giving birth to Benjamin. Okay. <clears throat> Looking back at that picture of the animal on the banner, that takes us to number 28. On his dying bed, Jacob was speaking uh, prophetic words over his children plus the two that he took as his own from his son uh, Joseph, who was thought to be dead. And when he got to Benjamin, he said, and you'll find this in Genesis 49, verse 27. He said, Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he devours or kills the prey. And in the evening, he divides the spoil. Check this out. The tribes of Benjamin and Judah. They are the only two of all the 12 tribes. They're the only two that have a steady presence throughout the entirety of the Bible. Isn't that neat? More about Benjamin. His name. Benjamin's name is the result of pain. Giving birth to him was very, very painful for Rachel. I, I'm guessing that that's probably why she died, but I don't know. Anyway, as a result of the pain, Rachel initially named Benjamin Benoni. That means the son of my pain. But just before she took her last breath, Jacob, or Israel, he changed his name while she was yet still alive. And he's changed his name to Benjamin, meaning the son of my right hand. You'll find that in Genesis chapter 35, verses 16 through 18. There's a lot of parallels that I'm seeing here. Now, okay, several months ago, Holy Spirit led me to start looking up Deccans. And I don't profess to be a, a prophet, but when I started looking at the Deccans and reading them, I was seeming like I was getting prophetic words uh, by virtue of the Holy Spirit. So I'm excited about that. And as a result of that, I want to get on to the next thing which is the Mazal, because the Mazal is going to lead me to the Deccans. So I'm going to jump over here, and we're going to talk about the Mazal, or the constellation associated with the month of Kislev. And as we know, that is Sagittarius the Archer. Now Sagittarius is the largest, let me say that again, the largest constellation in the Southern Hemisphere. We are in the Northern Hemisphere, by the way. But when it comes to size, it is the 15th overall largest of all constellations known or named in our solar system. And this picture here, this superimposed picture over the constellation, it depicts Sagittarius as a centaur pulling back a bow with an arrow on it. That takes us back, all the way back to that busy placard that we had before. 
when it mentioned about Kisler being the month to develop your war strategies, referring to weapons of warfare to stand against your enemy. That relates to Sagittarius, the archer. See, the bow and the arrows, they are representing weapons, but because this is in the heavenlies, weapons of spiritual warfare. Okay? The authority that Jesus gave to you and I, he said, all authority in heaven and in earth have been given unto me, and lo, I have given unto you, right? That is the bow. The word of God, that is the arrow from a spiritual standpoint. Wow. There you go. There I go with the goosebumps again. Okay. This star arrangement, it shows the constellation without the other business of all the other planetary stars. Now, I'm going to change that first big picture that showed up. But I want to point out something, and that is, you notice it looks like you see the centaur down at the bottom, and then you see the constellation, which is highlighted, okay? But then it looks like moonlight. That's not moonlight. And that moonlight looks like it extends all the way up into the heavenlies. And that's not what it is. That takes me to this picture here. If that represents the Milky Way, and if you could find the Milky Way, and Sagittarius can be seen low to the horizon and in the core of the constellation. So these, oh man. Oh, I see, I hit my, I hit my, uh, my mouse, okay. These arrows here, that, re that represents what I estimate to be the outer limits of the Milky Way, but the, you can still see light and business. See, the, the, the whole background has a milky-looking appearance to it, but right in the, in the core of it, you see the constellation. That was another Holy Spirit give me. Hallelujah. So now... We are finished with the constellation, so now we can get into what is the most exciting thing to me, and that is the Deccans. And my battery is getting low on the tablet. I didn't charge it. <laughs> I'm getting paid for my negligence. Anywho, let's look at the first Deccan. The first Deccan. It refers to the speedy God of exchange, commerce, and travel. Now watch this. With the focus of this season being on Thanksgiving, being one of the busiest travel times of the year, many, 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 many people will be traveling for Thanksgiving. Then, that's followed by Black Friday, being the busiest shopping day probably of the entire year. On top of that, this is also the season when the deer hunters take to the woods to hunt deer. Now, these are very, very large groups of people of all genders. Okay? When you put all that together, what the Deccan is saying, put together, all of these represents an extremely large army for the destruction of worldwide corruption. Wow. 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 Now that could mean, particularly from the hunted, the, the, the hunter's side, that the corrupt people who have been sent out to look for people and accuse them of things that they didn't do. Those would be the hunters, but there would be a reversal. The hunters would become the hunted as a result of that. That could mean that travel could be curtailed 
due to military occupation or martial law. But the caveat of it all is that the people could become very, very well financially fit because of getting back that which was stolen from them. And I could go into a long dissertation about that, but there are so many unbelievers out there that I won't even tell you what I know. I'll let you find out and then confirm it with you when you find out. Let's look at the second decan. The second decan, it seems to point to femininity versus masculinity with the massive popular support toward femininity. Now, in my opinion, that could be pointing to a coming in to males calling themselves female. Males wanting to compete against women in spite of their natural superiority in strength and agility. We are right now, we're in this thing. They, uh, this, this society wants men to be more feminine. They don't want to serve in the military. They just want to stay home and cook and be, act like a wife. I won't go into a whole lot of that. Let's go to the third decan. <laughs> the third decan seems to point to the God of time and the God of boundaries and the God of energy. Now, here's the point. As the northern hemisphere begins to move into greater darkness in relation to the winter season, that's an indication that solar power will be significantly reduced because the earth for the northern hemisphere will be tilted away from the sun, therefore getting less sunlight, okay, which is another drawback to solar power. And when we look at the fact that America went from energy independent to energy dependent, now we have high officials running around across the globe begging people for oil. The same thing that is stopped. Okay. So why did that happen? Because of radical anti-fossil fuel energy policies. And when we look at the times and boundaries, that seem to represent ends and new beginnings. Now could that mean an end to negative, non-productive policies and the beginning of new and production producing policies? Uh, policies. That's what I felt like Holy Spirit gave me out of that. So, now, with this in mind, we're going to focus on uh, the Festival of Lights. There's a lot to learn about that. Now, the Festival of Lights is the only holiday celebrated during the month of Kislev. It is also the only holiday that connects the month of Kislev and the following month of Tevet. The Festival of Lights as we talked about earlier, it's called Hanukkah in two different ways. That's one of the spellings of it, and this is the other spelling. But remember, spell two different, two, two different ways, but pronounce the exact same. Now, the Festival of Lights is an eight-day celebration commemorating the rededication of the Jewish temple. The story about that which is not in the Bible, but it is in the uh, Torah. That story, we're going to talk about that next month, in the month of Tevet, okay? But during this eight-day celebration, which starts on the 25th day of Kislev, as I said earlier, a light representing the day of the event is lit. Now, when we look at this menorah, all of the candles are lit. That's an indication 
that the eight day celebration has come to a close. It's in the last day. Okay. But what I want to show you is more detail about it. Okay. So, when we look at the eight day menorah, remember our British, uh, our uh, uh, Jewish brothers and sisters, they count from left to right. I'm sorry, from right back to left. So when they number the candles, you know, the ones, the numbers represent the day of the eight day celebration. Okay? Now you notice they skip the one in the middle. But we're only talking about the ones on the wings. The one in the middle, it has a specific name all of its own. And it is called, that's the one we're talking about there, okay? Uh, it is called the Shemesh. Now, the Shemesh means the one who serves. So this is what happens. When the celebration begins, none of the candles are lit. For day one, at the right time, the Shemesh, is lit and is not extinguished. And then it provides the light for the first day. Okay? Day one. Okay? Day one, that candle stays lit. And if it burns all the way down, then it's just replaced with another candle. Okay? But, but the procedure is the Shemesh is lit one time or uh, another candle is put in to com continue to replace it, but it, that's a continuous light. That's relating to the story that you're going to hear about next month. Day two rolls around at the right time. Then the Shemesh will provide light to the unlit candle until it is lit by the Shemesh. So that is the one who serves or the giver of light. And just so you know, according to Jewish custom, the Shemesh, it represents Messiah. Okay. That's a lot of information. And that's what Holy Spirit had me cut off. Okay. Um, and still, we, I think we're running close to an hour. So it worked out. Uh, there is so, so much more that uh, I could share, but that's not the way Holy Spirit led me. So we got to go by what Holy Spirit says, not what I say. Okay? But the, so that's going to bring us to the end of this presentation, bringing us to our Jewish brethren, Rona Shofar. Um, I like that one. I'd like to have one, a big one like that. I have a big one, but a Yemenite, but mine is not quite that big. Anyway, before the battery dies on me, um, I'm going to call this to an end, and I'm going to thank you all for taking the time to watch and learn with me. As the uh, Holy Spirit was speaking through me as I was going through this. So to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'm going to bid everybody a shalom and good night. And thank you for taking the time to watch with me and learn.